Let's take a look at the simplest crosses called a monohybrid cross. For an example, let's use the gene that makes dimples and it comes in two forms called alleles. Therefore, we could have three genotypes. We could have homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive. So these letter codes are the genotype. The phenotype would be has dimples. That's the phenotype. Has dimples would also occur here. No dimples for this individual. So let's cross a homozygous dominant male who has dimples with a homozygous recessive female who does not. So this is how you set up a Punnett square. I like to put the females on the side and the male gametes across the top. The male is homozygous dominant and can only produce one kind of gamete, so there it is. There's room for a second one over atop this column. And likewise for the female, she can only produce little d gametes, and there's room for two of her eggs on the side. The results of the Punnett square indicate that there's uh, room in the table for four offspring, but it does not mean this mating has to produce four offspring. The fertilization will occur between the male's gamete and the female's gamete. So the first offspring in the chart would have this genotype, big D, little d. Likewise, for the other three options, this gamete gets fertilized by this gamete type, and this offspring would have this genotype, big D, little d. As you can see, it's going to be the same thing here and here. To conclude, these are the parents abbreviated with the letter P. These four are what are called the F1 generation. It stands for first filial. So the results show that 100% of the F1 are big D, little d. You could also say four out of four are big D, little d. You could also say all the F1 are big D, little d. Remember, the genetic code is called the genotype. Genotype. Now, what is their trait? Well, 100% have dimples. All have dimples. Remember, their trait and the outward appearance is the phenotype. That's what they look like.